Damn it. Good day, folks. Jordan here. Welcome to another software overview video. Today we're looking at Ubuntu 9.10 Karmic Koala, released on the 29th of October 2009. This operating system actually has quite a bit going for it. In fact, you know, a lot more than I was expecting a .10 release to have. I mean, seriously. I mean, look at 8.10. That thing was pretty disappointing. But look at 9.10 and holy moly. There's a lot different, including a new boot screen once again. Yes, there's another new boot screen. We'll see that when we start it up. That's definitely something that's um, unnecessary, but they did it anyway, of course they did it. You know, it's just Canonical in a nutshell. But what was interesting was there was a person from Ubuntu or Canonical or something, I don't know where he stands today or where he stood back then, but Mark Shuttleworth on the 20th of February 2009 said that Ubuntu 9.10 was more focused on cloud computing. And what's interesting is that that not only tied into, well, well, cloud computing in general, because there's a new Ubuntu One client in Ubuntu 9.10. And I mentioned briefly in Ubuntu 9.04 that Ubuntu One was a service I didn't have, but I believe it was launched either shortly before or shortly after, or maybe I think it was shortly before uh, Ubuntu 9.10 came out, where you actually had online storage through Ubuntu One or something like that. I'm not entirely sure about how that all works or how it works today. I know it still exists, but I'm not entirely familiar with it. But the client at least launched with this particular OS. Um, it was the, just you called, I think, uh, Ubuntu One Cloud something or another. I'll look, we'll look at that when we get in the operating system. One thing that was interesting though about 9.10 that was touted, but didn't actually happen, was supposed to be a new theme. And this is just a different theme on top of GNOME. But what actually is interesting though about that was it really wasn't in the OS. They touted it. It kind of sort of leaks through with like a like a dark title bar. I'm sure that people in the Ubuntu um, community would know what I'm talking about. It was sort of like a half baked sort of theme, but you know you can kind of tell it was there. But they really didn't see it until 10.04 LCS, which we'll obviously be seeing later on. Well, we'll then we'll see that new theme. Another interesting change was that the file system is different. Instead of using ext3 as the default file system, which Ubuntu has always used since uh, 4.10 actually, they actually switched it now to using ext4. Now, I don't know what the improvements are between ext4 from ext3. You'd have to look that up online. I'm not going to, but it's there. It's a change. It's definitely something. One thing that's also interesting is that the login screen has a different style of transition, which for Intel graphics was supposed to be a seamless transition into the desktop. It's supposed to have better performance on Intel graphics subsystems, but I don't know what I'm gonna test it on that would help with that, but maybe we might make something work. Another thing is there's some further speed improvements for the Netbook Remix, which I think was killed off at 10.04. I know I talked about this previously and forgive my memory for this, but I believe it was killed off once 10.04 came out or 10.10 or something like that. Then they killed off the Netbook Remix because they would be introducing Unity to the standard desktop edition of Ubuntu. And um, I believe that's why they killed off the Netbook Remix or something like that. I don't remember. But yeah, they made further improvements to a, a version of Ubuntu that they weren't even keeping in their standard development cycle, which is pretty funny. The Pigeon Instant Messaging Client which I didn't take a look at in any of my Ubuntu videos because I don't have anything that really signs into that anymore, especially not AOL or anything like that, you know. But apparently that was replaced in 9.10 with a client known as Empathy Instant Messenger, which we will briefly take a look at um, in this video. Also, the bootloader was updated to Grub2, so that's a pretty nice improvement. And there's also a really big deal inside of this OS. It was the Ubuntu Software Center that launched with Ubuntu 9.10. As a matter of fact, actually, We'll see that on the website once we take a look at that, but this replaces the add remove programs app in GNOME, which basically was like genome dash app dash install in the terminal if you wanted to use it that way. But that was replaced with the Ubuntu Software Center, which we will definitely be taking a look at once we install the operating system. And other than that, um, the only real major difference that I've noticed was that there's a new slideshow that plays during the operating system um, installation process, which we will definitely take a look at, which touts the operating system's features and programs that are pre-installed and so on and so forth, which obviously has not been in the OS before. So this will definitely be something we can take a look at. But before we take a look at the operating system, of course, 
we have to take a look at the old website, as obligatory as it is for these videos. So let's check out the website now. So here's the website for Ubuntu 9.10, and as you can see, it's changed a little bit, and I don't think it really looks any better than the old one, if I'm going to be honest. There's also some random Ubuntu text up here, which if you click on it just reloads the whole web page anyway, so I'm not sure why that's up there. Somebody done goofed on the website design because these are the same thing, so somebody must have definitely been goofing off with the HTML code. Anyway, as you can see, Ubuntu 9.10 is here, and there's actually a scrolling little slideshow thing on their website, and there you can see the Ubuntu 1 sign-in screen from 2009. There you can see the slight tease of the new theme, which we will definitely be taking a look at. This was the distribution with the classic uh, desktop environment that had the new wallpapers. This is the one. I've been searching for it, but, you know, I just haven't seen it. And there you can see the software center there. So, all in all, this is a very big release. A big deal for a .10 release, but obviously once we get into 10.04, you'll see the big deal with the new theme, which we will definitely be talking about before too long of course. Faster, smoother, more beautiful. New features, fixes, and applications designed around you. Developing at speed, fun tools make it easy to write and deploy apps for Ubuntu. And introducing your personal cloud. Store and share files and contacts in a couple of clicks with Ubuntu One. And of course that service still runs today in modern day Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, which of course eventually we'll get to. We just got to run through all the different versions first. And of course, they also tout the server edition and the netbook remix down below. Because of course, netbooks at this time were a big deal. And otherwise, this website is extremely Spartan. They really cleaned it up, I guess, and made it look a lot better, more focused around the software that they actually, you know, are advertising. But it just doesn't look nearly as, you know, catching as the previous one. I don't know if it's just me, but it doesn't look nearly as good. I don't know. Anyway. Let's check out the standard Ubuntu page and let's see what's different on this. What is Ubuntu? Ubuntu is a community developed operating system that is perfect for laptops, desktops, and servers. Whether you use it at home, at school, or at work, Ubuntu contains all the applications you'll ever need from word processing and email applications to web server software and programming tools. Ubuntu is and always will be free of charge. You do not pay any licensing fees. You can download, use, and share Ubuntu with your friends, family, school, or business for absolutely nothing. We issue a new desktop and server release every six months. That means you'll always have the latest and greatest applications that the open source world has to offer. And interestingly, they show a old login screen on their screenshot there. I think that's like, God, Ubuntu 6.06 LTS or something like that? Like, why do they go backwards? That's just weird. I don't know why they did that. And they're also using an equally old laptop, although I guess from the time period, that was probably pretty typical. Ubuntu is designed with security in mind. You get free security updates for at least 18 months on the desktop and server. With the long-term support version, you get three years support on the desktop and five years on the server. There is no extra fee for the LTS version. We make our very best work available to everyone on the same free terms. Upgrades to the new versions of Ubuntu are and, are and always will be free of charge. I'm misreading this. Everything you need comes on one CD, providing a complete working environment. Additional software is available online. And obviously you can see they have changed the icons a little bit. Although I think that's again from an older Ubuntu because Ubuntu 9.10 does not have add remove. So I think that's from like 6.06 .06 once again. That's just weird that they went backwards on the screenshots. And they just talk about Ubuntu down below. And it, this is interesting. They have a derivative section here. What's in the derivatives this time around? Oh, here we go. Here's some of the extra Ubuntus that actually are out there. I think these are all still made today. Kubuntu obviously still exists. Edge Ubuntu, I believe, still exists as well. X Ubuntu still is around. Mythbuntu is still around, apparently, for making a home theater PC. I believe that's still around. There's also a Lubuntu or Lubuntu, which is based on the LXF or yeah, the LXDE desktop environment or some kind of XFCE theme or something or another. That's supposed to be more lightweight. I don't remember when they launched that particular derivative. I don't remember. Anyway, that doesn't really matter too much. I want to check out the cloud thing briefly here because I think that's pretty interesting to take a look at since uh, cloud computing was a pretty big deal with this release. 
Ubuntu Private Cloud is compatible with the Amazon EC2 Public Cloud. Interesting. And of course, this is just news. It talks about cloud computing back in 2009, which was a really big deal. I mean, a really big deal back in the day. I mean, obviously, if you were into technology or even any kind of remote technology thing, you knew cloud computing was definitely a big deal. I think it really started to explode in 2011 or 2012 or something like that. That's when cloud computing really started to boom, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that was when SkyDrive launched and iCloud was launched. Well, there was MobileMe, but iCloud was a big deal back in the day and so on and so forth. So yeah, cloud computing was a huge deal back in the late 2000s to early 2010s, man. It was a huge booming thing in the tech industry. Anyway, I believe that's probably all there is to say about the website here. So let's go ahead and close out of that and let's take a look at the operating system. All right, and I swear I think there's some more languages on this language selection screen, but that might just be me. I think there's some extra languages on there. Anyway, I'm gonna pick English and try Ubuntu. And immediately you're going to see the new splash screen when we start this up, once we get past the old IBM thingamajig there. Yeah, it's just a glowing Ubuntu logo. And honestly, I don't know why they didn't just do this for 9.04. I think this is a much cleaner startup screen. It looks a lot more simplistic. It lets you know you're running Ubuntu and then, ah, flash text mode. <laughs> but what's really neat is this login screen. Like, look at this. And now the login sound plays after that little Ubuntu splash screen thingamajig. So, very interesting. All right, and here we are at the desktop of Ubuntu 9.10. And obviously, of course, the screen resolution is quite low, so I'll have to fix that, but I'll do that after we install. But I figure the first thing we see, uh, the first thing we notice here is that the status tray has more unified looking icons. They look a lot cleaner. This doesn't have a bright red icon on it. It's more blended into the title bar. Of course, this theme would later be replaced in Ubuntu with the dark theme that we would eventually see. And here's a teaser for that. Um, it was touted that this was supposed to get a new theme, but not entirely. This is the default theme. As you can see, it's got a default like dark chocolate color to it. I believe that's some kind of a slideshow of some kind. I'm not sure. I guess I'll have to... Um, okay, yeah, it's kind of like a theme pack or something. I'm not sure how that changes. I guess you do that maybe? I'm not... I'm really not sure how that's supposed to work. But anyway, there's also a the link for getting more backgrounds online, which is interesting. And as you can see, there's a lot of desktop backgrounds in Ubuntu 9.10. And uh, we'll take a look at these after we get the operating system installed. So I'm going to, before we do this actually, we're gonna increase the display resolution. One thing you'll notice is the icons from the system folder. Oh, I gotta wait for the disk to figure itself out there. The icons are gone. I think that's a bug though. I think they, they probably fixed that because I don't think they would have left it this way with the plain text in there. That just looks hideous. But knowing Canonical, anything goes. So, all right, let's go ahead and get to installing Ubuntu 9.10. And we'll see if that splash, uh, yeah, that little slideshow thing, the splash screen. I almost said splash screen, I'm dumb. Let's see if that comes up. We are not in Eastern time zone. Interesting that they don't say the city names anymore. I think they did in later ones, but now they just mention uh, time zones, which is a lot more understandable. So they definitely made that change. Yeah, it's like keyboard layout. This looks the same for the most part. Um, this obviously looks the same. Same, oops, um, same everything. Thing. They finally decreased the size of the dots, which I appreciate because the dots used to be so freaking large that once you got past like a certain number of characters, you couldn't see how many you had. So thank God they changed that. So anyway, let's check out the slideshow. All right, here we go, look at this. Thank you for choosing Ubuntu 9.10. We believe that every computer user should be able to work in the environment of their choice and be free to download, change, study, and share the software for any purpose without paying licensing fees. Ha, Windows. As part of our promise, we want Ubuntu to work as well for you as possible. So while it installs, the slideshow will give you a quick introduction. Although that's probably not gonna last too long given how quick this is installing. So uh, yeah, we'll see how long this slideshow lasts. Ubuntu comes with the widely acclaimed Firefox 3.5 web browser. It protects your privacy and personal information so you can surf worry-free. Add your own personal note. Choose from thousands of themes and add-ons that tailor Firefox to how you use the web. Not somebody else, you. Wow, amazing, right? <laughs> Sarcasm aside, of course.
Organize, enjoy, and share your photos. With F-Spot Photo Manager, it is really easy to share, touch up, and organize digital photos. Use tags to describe your photos. Later on, you can use the tags to find a particular one. Use the export option to write your photos to CDs, email them to friends, or share them online. To get started, choose F-Spot from the Graphics Applications menu or attach a digital camera and follow the prompts. I don't know, can you actually make this slide show go any faster? No, that was only introduced in the later releases where you had the arrows you can go through the slideshow at your own pace. Ubuntu is ready to play videos and music from the web and from DVDs. It works straight away for the free and popular formats that people can use without paying license fees. Rhythmbox Music Player it lets you organize your music and listen to internet radio and blah 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 blah. I don't think VLC came yet. I think that was still a later version of Ubuntu that um, VLC came preloaded. And I still don't know if they even preload VLC. I don't think they do. I know in other Linux distros they do, but I don't think in this one in particular they actually do. But I don't know. All right, there's the email client, good old Evolution. Connects most of the popular services like Gmail and Yahoo and web calendars, junk filtering, search tools, all that stuff. So that's really useful. I don't know if, uh, no, other distributions came with Thunderbird preloaded, but this one did not, at least not until a later version. I don't, I don't even know if they include Thunderbird and modern Ubuntu. I don't think they do. I think you have to install it yourself, but I could be wrong. With Empathy, there's Empathy. It keeps you connected right from the start. It connects using Google Talk, Windows Live, and Jabber. Oh my god. Who's heard of Google Talk? I mean, I remember when that used to be the the modern day Hangouts. I remember when it was called Google Talk way back in the day. I actually never used Windows Live personally for me. I think they shut all those servers down for Windows Live and transitioned all the modern Windows Live users over to Skype. I think that's what Microsoft did. Don't quote me on that. OpenOffice is a powerful Office software suite that is very easy to learn. It is useful to create letters, presentations, and spreadsheets, as well as diagrams and databases. OpenOffice.org works with documents for all the popular Office applications, including WordPerfect and Microsoft Office. <laughs> I think they actually still use WordPerfect nowadays, come to think of it. It uses the ISO standard open document format by default. Well, good. But yeah, I think a lot of organizations, in fact, the developers themselves, they still actually develop WordPerfect, although, of course, the industry standard is Microsoft Office, as to nobody's surprise. Installation is finished. Yay. We're going to go ahead and restart here, of course. And leave the beautiful desktop wallpaper behind. There's the shutdown screen. It just glows the Ubuntu logo once again. I don't know why they didn't stick with this. This looks a lot better than what they have nowadays, which is just having the Ubuntu logo and that glows. Why don't they just have something minimalistic like this? I mean, I think that looks a lot better. Um, yeah, <laughs> one problem that I noticed with this is that when you go to shut down the live environment, as far as I know, either the text is hidden for this in this particular spot, or it's actually supposed to tell you to please remove the installation media and press enter. Well, that's clearly not visible. Let me see if I can press enter and actually have it work. I don't think so. Oh, it did, okay. So it's try. it was trying to tell me to please remove the installation media and press enter, but obviously the text wasn't there. So yeah, that was kind of a bit broken. But anyway, we're starting back up here. I actually wonder what the login screen looks like. You see, that started up pretty quickly and went back to text mode. And... Okay, so it still plays the drum sounds, but as you can see, now we have a more graphical in nature login screen, finally. It took them long enough to do that because that was the biggest thing I had a problem with with the early Ubuntu is what you had to type in your username. So good luck trying to log back into your computer if you forgot your username. I just think that's kind of a bit weird. But anyway, I'll just go ahead and type in my password. And uh, yeah, let's see how that transition looks. I don't think it's going to work though because again, lack of VMware tools, but let's see if it actually plays a transition. No, it really doesn't at all. So, okay, I figured that was going to happen because, yeah, I'm only in a VM with no VMware tools. So, anyway, so here we are. We are back in the horribly low screen resolution of 800 by 600, and I keep triggering VMware, which is really annoying. So let's go ahead and apply 1280 by 720 and get on with the video. Damn it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with uh, looking at some of these programs. I figure the first one we'll take a look at here is the instant messaging client. Although first things first, before we do, here are the new icons. Accessories has an old Swiss Army knife on it or some kind of multifunction tool. Obviously graphics has a different icon on it. Um, Internet definitely has a different icon on it, um, which also houses Ubuntu One, which we'll come back to later. Um, Office has a different icon. All these icons are a little bit different. 
which is interesting that they revamped them for this particular theme. I don't know, oops, I don't think they actually use these in 10.04 LTS. I could be wrong though. Anyway, let's check out Empathy first. With Empathy, you can chat with people online nearby and with friends and colleagues who use Google Talk, AIM, Windows Live, and many other chat programs that probably don't exist anymore. I think, uh, let's see, what kind of a chat account do you have? Oh wow, it actually supports quite a bit of them, including a specific one for Yahoo Japan. I don't even think Yahoo Messenger exists anymore either. I know QQ certainly does. I don't use QQ, but I know that's a service that still is around. I don't think MSN, yeah, that must have been the Windows Live thing that doesn't work anymore. AIM certainly doesn't exist anymore. That was a famous one that went out. But I believe the Google Talk APIs probably still work with uh, Hangouts. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to try signing in, of course, and I will resume the video once I get my sign-in information in there. All right. And as you can see, yeah, it does work. Interestingly, I'm surprised it actually still connects. All right, so that's pretty cool. Um, interestingly, it actually changes the icon up here to set your status on your chat thing. That's pretty interesting. I wonder how you turn that off, because I don't want that to run in the background. That's a bit uh, interesting that they put that there. I don't know how you're supposed to turn that off. Anyway, I'm not keeping this install anyway, so that doesn't really make that much of a difference to me. So let's check out Firefox next. Of course, that's something I always usually try to do. And 3.5 was certainly a big deal back in the day. I wonder what the Ubuntu start page looks like. Uh, it's basically the same thing as 9.04. But that also makes me wonder, what did they do for um, 10.04, or if the link actually for that actually works? I'm not entirely sure. Let's give it a shot here if my numlock actually worked. Oh, okay, they went to that modern look, which we will soon see here in a bit. So, yeah. No surprises there, but yep, Firefox 3.5. This is a slightly newer release, of course, because um, obviously Canonical updates their distributions, even the ones that are the .10 updates. Um, let's see, my mouse is not working. That is really annoying. Uh, that's <laughs> it's pretty laggy. Um, let's check out Ubuntu 1, because I wanted to see what that looks like here. Show icon when updating. Oh. That's definitely farting in my face. Connect on start automatically, show icon when updating. Sure, that's fine. Okay. Oh, okay, it's up there in the status bar now. Okay, so it says your files are up to date and connect. Interesting. So it kind of, it's like SkyDrive, OneDrive, whatever you want to call those things. It kind of just hides in your system tray. I don't know if that just pops up inside of the home folder or anything. Yeah, it has its own dedicated little Ubuntu One folder there. Interesting. I don't know if this works anymore. I don't know if it does. I don't probably think it does anymore. Obviously your uh, email and stuff's up there, your instant messaging's up there too, so that's pretty nice to see. So let's see what else there is that we could probably take a look at. I think other than what we've already seen with the installation software, the themes and such, I think that's really all there is. I mean, the backgrounds are here. That's certainly a difference. I mean, look at these backgrounds, man. They, they give the operating system an aesthetic. That kind of reminds me of the Kindle icon. I don't know if that's how they're actually still using the Kindle icon, I'm not sure, but as you can see, there's a decent selection of wallpapers to pick through. Of course, I just use the default for my thumbnail, of course, as we all know, as you're obviously watching this video, but I could have picked any one of these other ones. There's some really nice looking ones in here for sure. Interestingly, it fades those two, but it doesn't fade. Oh, it fades that one, but that one doesn't fade. I'm not sure why that is. I bet you that's just a graphic bug. But uh, anyway, the themes themselves are pretty much the same. Um, obviously, these don't work, but yeah. So yeah, I think that's really all there is to say about Ubuntu 9.10. Most of the changes are under the hood, so visually it really doesn't look any different or much different comparative to the last release, but a lot of the under the hood changes are really appreciated. And uh, I think that'll about do it for this video. So I thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.